what's up you Dobbs Rules is right here and welcome to another episode of Game Gems. Last episode we did the Nintendo DS. Now, what was after the Nintendo DS? No, 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 not the DSi. No, 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 not the, not the XL. I'm talking about the new version. The 3DS. Now, just to tell you truly people, the Nintendo 3DS is my absolute favourite handheld console of all time. It beats the PSP, it beats the DS, it beats the Game Boy, it beats them all in my eyes. The 3DS is freaking phenomenal. I love it. And it still pains me that it's now shut down and you can't get any other games on it unless you buy them physically. Good thing for me, I did buy all the ones that I needed before they went bye-bye. Anyhow, I am going to be talking about my five gems that I own. Now, like I said, people, some of these games you may not have heard of, or you have heard of them, and you can't find them anywhere. Probably because they're rare or they're quite uncommon. But like I said, I will talk about them briefly on why, why I think they're gems, and also a little bit about the story, and why some people may not have never seen them or heard of them before. Anyhow, let's get this started. Like I said, they're going to be randomly placed, but the, the main one is right at the bottom, which I'll show you last. First one I'm going to talk about is Layton's Mystery Journey. Oh yes. Now, a lot of people will be thinking, you like Professor Layton. Why? You're not good at puzzles. Yes, I am not good with puzzles, but this game actually helped these games, Professor Layton games helped me out with puzzles, to be honest. Now, a lot of people turn their nose with this game because it's not Professor Layton. It's a completely different character. It's the girl who works with Professor Layton. It's a story about herself and her own mysteries. That's why I like it. They changed the, re the recipe. They changed something that they knew it worked and they could change it to make it even better. Is it better than Professor Layton? Of course it's not. Professor Layton is way better. But this had something more interesting that Professor Layton did not have. A female main character. And she actually holds her own in this game. Now, of course, a lot of people may be thinking, the oh, Professor Layton was way better, he was a blow, so of course he was better. No, that's sexist, motherfucker. She is amazing. She's a fantastic character. And holding herself own, she was like the fe she's a female Sherlock Holmes. That's what she really like is. Now, the main part of this game. Storyline, it's great. I enjoyed it. Puzzles, though. Puzzles were a lot, lot tougher than the Professor Layton one. They were a lot harder, to be honest. And there were way more puzzles in this than any other Professor Layton ever had. I think Professor Layton's game that had the most puzzles was around about 182. This had a grand total of 250 puzzles. Holy shit, that's a lot. And I never really found all of them, to be honest. To be honest, people, I didn't find all of them. But... I did give myself a good go at it, and I did beat it. This is a sealed copy version, if you guys want to know. I do have a opened one, which of course it's just the cartridge only. I picked up random in the car boot. But, this game is so good. It does beat a lot of the Professor Layton ones. It beats Pandora's Box. It beats Lost, um, Lost Towers, or the Lost, Lost Clock. And it does beat uh, Inspector's Call. It doesn't beat... The Curious Village. Curious Village was absolutely amazing. But this game can definitely rival with Professor Layton's other games because it is absolutely spot on. It really is. It's a lot of fun. I'd give you I tell you people, if you guys love puzzles and like to try and test your test your brain out, give this one a go because it's absolutely amazing. A fantastic story, great puzzles, fantastic character. Next up, we're moving on to a bit of Disney again. And that is Epic Mickey Power of Illusion. Now, I like Epic Mickey. Epic Mickey was something different. It was more dark, to be, not, to be honest, people. A lot dark. Now, why do I like this one than any of Epic Mickey? Because this one pretty much has all the other Disney characters in this game. Hands down, it has them all. It has Captain Hawk. It has the Queen of Hearts, it has Jafar, it has Maleficent, it has the Beast, it has pretty much any villain and hero that was in other Disney films in this game. And that's what I love about it. 
uh, Mickey Mouse is in all these different universes which are pretty much are connected. And that's the one thing I love about it though because a lot of Disney games like this don't really give themselves a bit of shine. Of course there was one that did shine up like Kingdom Hearts which had all type of worlds from Disney. But when it came to not with Square Enix and it was just a Disney game alone, it had to be Mickey Mouse to get that done. And of course they did it perfect on the 3DS with Epic Mickey Power of the Illu Power of Illusion. Now it is different to the other Epic Mickey games. Epic Mickey on the PS3 was actually extremely fun and it was very dark. Yet, yeah, this is not as dark as them ones. But I tell you what though, the platforming and the controls of this, mind blowing. And also, playing this in 3D is so good. It really is good in 3D. Now I can say that, some of these games, like I said, like this one here and, and a few others I'm going to talk to you about as well, weren't really good in 3D, but this one works in 3D. And like I said, that was the gimmick for the 3DS, because it needed to be in 3D. Not a lot of games made it into 3D, but this one definitely did, and it worked. And that's why it's the gem in my eyes. It's a fantastic game, great story, great controls, great platforming, fantastic characters. Definitely a game in my eyes for being a gem. Next up is a big game. One of the games that pretty much front-sided the whole entire N Nintendo 3DS and put, it, put themselves on the map and that is Kid Icarus Uprising this is the collector's edition people, it's massive this game was so unique very unique now of course we were always asking for Star Fox everybody wants that this is Star Fox but this, was, this is Star Fox with Kid Icarus in it that's all what it is. It's fantastic. And of course, there's a lot, a lot of Greek, mytho Greek mythology in this game too. Now, the one thing about it though, why is this really a gem as well? Uh, as a DS game as well, yet alone. Because not only you get the game, and of course the accessories and everything. This game also contained a booster pack inside it, which was the AR cards to play battle games with it. Which Sally did discontinue about a year later. And then also though, if you do find yourself some sealed boost packs of these, they're extremely valuable and rare. And I've been trying to find them down the line for many many years and I've not seen a other sealed boost pack except on eBay for at least a hundred quid. And yeah, only in one boost pack I think there's only like five cards or a hundred quid. Yeah, £20 per card, it's a quite stingy price. But anyhow, back to the game though. You're Kid Icarus, you're pretty much flying all over the um, Greek mythology world to take on special enemies and of course to take down the male lad himself, Hades. Now, this game has a lot, a lot of references to full-on Greek mythology. It really is, and I love Greek mythology. This is probably why I love this game a lot. The gameplay is amazing. Like I said, it's just like Star Fox. You can actually move your three, your 3DS cons console around with you all over the room, and it will actually change direction in the game, unless you turn that off and use your actual analog stick. The combat is spot on, music is amazing, storyline is pretty much exactly what all the other Kid Icarus games were, pretty much good versus evil, you get the gist of it, and of course the divine weapons in this, in this game are so much exactly the weapons that were used in Greek mythology. Like every single Greek god that was ever existed all their weapons are in this game, which is great. I love it. So pretty much though, once again, if you guys can find this copy of this game, and like I said though, you may be thinking, is it only like this? No, this is just the collector's edition, like I said. You can easily just get yourself the physical game, which is inside. But yeah, definitely a good game. Definitely recommend playing it, people. 
and yes, I would recommend getting the collector's edition. It's really worth your time and it's really a good game. Next up, a very expensive game. Thankfully, I do have it as a physical version besides buying it as well as a digital download. And that is Shin Megami Tensei's Devil Summoner Overclocked. Monsters came out of the comps. What can I say about this game? Uh, well, it's a this? Shin Megami Tensei game. I love Shin Megami Tensei. Is it a Persona game? No, it's not. So it doesn't. So it counts. <laughs> now, this game came out in 2009. Once again, just like the same time. Anyway, what year was it again? Was it 2009? Or did I just read that wrongly then? Sorry, 2012. Apologies. The first one before this came out in 2009. And. This game actually shows its absolute quality from its protege, which was on the DS console, to the 3DS, is highly, highly praised upon. No wonder why this game is so rare, because it went under the radar, and like, that's what I said. All Atlas games go under the radar, they never really release trailers hardly on the internet, unless you follow them day by day, day by day. Now. Like I said, it has all the monsters that are in the Persona games and also in the Shin Megami Tensei games. It's a traditional strategy RPG slash JRPG. Um, it's based in Tokyo. Um, Mist of a lockdown. The, gov the, the um, government's cold-blooded sure response to a demon did. invasion. Armed only with a mysterious comp. Will you survive this chaos? It's pretty much a full-on game that's you. pretty much all Shin Megami Tensei games and also just like Persona. Now why is it really really high and why do I really recommend it and why is it a freaking gem? Well number one, the price, it's rare, it's 120 quid, easy in CEX, I think it's worth, it's worth more now, or it's gone down. Um, not a lot of people have heard of it a lot of, a lot of people are massive Shin Megami Tensei fans and a lot of them do not own this game al alone. If they do, kudos to you lot. The story is fantastic, it pretty much follows the last one and as well the combat is just like all the rest of the Shin Megami Tensei games but as a DS4. So pretty much, I can't really say much about it though because I've talked too much about Shin Megami Tensei game and that's why I should really move on with it. All I say is, it's a great game, we recommend playing it, get it self done people, get yourself a copy of it. Now for the final one. Now all I can say is people. This is the most one of the most rarest Nintendo 3DS games that I own and it is actually to be purchased around the world. This game alone costs as a collector's edition around about £700. And I would 100% recommend you guys getting it. Whether you get it as a physical version, a download, hopefully you did get it as a download before it went bye bye with Nintendo with for the 3DS or emulate it. And it's this. Don't know what it is? Well, let me turn it around. Senran Kagura 2 Deep Crimson. I've talked about this a few months back with uh, when I said that Nintendo's eShop was showing down with uh, 3DS and the Wii U. I told you guys to purchase this game. And yeah. This is the collector's edition, which is worth around about 750 quid. Very, very expensive. Now, why is it my number one spot? Well, number one, it's rare. I have to say, it's rare. It's a gem anyway. It's a freaking diamond. It's a freaking one of the most expensive diamonds in the world. It's the Pink Panther diamond. And of course, it's an anime game. I love my anime. It's a... Um, Pretty much a beat em up game with waifus. Pretty much, you guys know about waifus, you guys know what they mean. It's all these girls' characters and all that lot, and of course, more of them on the back. It has a cool um, storyline. Pretty much, it is like a chick flick storyline, but still, I like them type of games. Um, pretty much, it is like a chick flick waifu female version of Dynasty Boys. That's all I have to really say. It's pretty much like that with massive combat and a lot of body revealing, if you guys know about that. Now, 
I can't, like I said, I will talk, show you clips about it, but I probably can't show you much of it because it is probably going to make me demonetized. But, all I can say is to you people, if you do see this anywhere and you find it super duper cheap, I mean less than about £300, get it for fuck's sake. It is worth it, it's an investment, it's one of the best games on the 3DS, it is one of the rarest games on the 3DS. Purchase this flipping game, you won't regret it. It is an investment, people, and I love it. It's one of my favourite games. <laughs> Anyhow, that is my uh, this. That is pretty much all I got time for today, people. Talk about the 3DS. These are my gems: Senran Kagura Deep Crimson, number two; Shimagana Tensei Devil Survivor Overclock; Kid Icarus; Epic Mickey; and of course, Layton's uh, Mystery 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 Journey. Now you may be thinking people, what is going to be the next episode? To be honest, I have no idea yet. I haven't decided. I'm still working on the Nite on the Game Boy Advance, but also, we did quite a lot of handhelds again. We'd best to go ahead and move back to the actual consoles. I wonder what could be next. Maybe one episode or two episodes of the PlayStation 2? Maybe. Depends on how I feel, depends on how busy I am. Like I said, people, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Remember, what about 87% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. So what are you doing? Subscribe. And remember, it is free, so subscribe whatever you can. And it will help the community a lot as well. And as well, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, like I said. Comment down below, what is your five choices on the 3DS that you think are gems in your eyes? That you own, personally. And with that being said... The people I'm Lugo see you guys for subscribing, and this has been another episode of Game Gems. The people I'm Lugo see you guys again. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I love this game.